So you want to be an engineer, but your printer ain't fly? You better hit us up to get a real fine guy. Welcome to Build It! In today's episode, we're going to be looking at some ways to upgrade a 3D printer. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, this printer is called the Tronox... The Tron... <laughs> the Tron... The Something X1, and I do have to mention it was a free demo from Gearbest, normally costing just shy of about $140. Which is already a pretty good indication of the kind of quality we're going to get out of it, but we'll save that later for the review. Okay, so to start off on a bad note, this printer's got a pretty small print size of only 15 by 15 by 15 centimeters with no heat bed and is often pretty wobbly when printing, which causes some really lackluster prints. However, this printer legit costs less than the pie top we made in a previous episode. So that's cool. And with some mods, it really can output some pretty great prints. So people have been commenting for quite a while telling me to stop using cardboard and plastic to make my projects. So you can imagine when this thing finally showed up in the mail, I was really excited to finally get to mess around with it. And this was the first 3D printer I've ever actually messed with, which just made it even more exciting. The build process is also kind of fun, taking about 3 hours to build it and 3 hours to make sense of the instructions. Now, once it's finished being built, you should be presented with a ridiculous amount of cables connecting the control board and the main printer. Now, these look pretty ugly even when tied up, so to fix this, we're going to implement our first mod. Obviously, I'm no 3D printer expert, so I'm sure there's a valid reason why the designer chose to make the 3D printer and the control board two different pieces. But to me, this just leaves this mess of cables everywhere and makes this tiny printer take up way too much space for its size. Okay, so the first thing to do is to design a case for the 3D printer to sit on, which will have all the wires, screen, and control board packed away inside of it. Then we can just use some of the leftover spacers and screws from the 3D printer build. Which there were a lot of, by the way. So much so that I'm kind of scared my 3D printer might just fall apart at some point because I didn't build it properly. Yeah, I can already imagine someone angry at me for using cardboard to mod a 3D printer. And you're probably right, but hear me out. Because of the big size of the base, it would take multiple days just to print the base. Not to mention all the filament you'd have to use to print it. And right now I don't have that much filament, so I kind of wanted to save it for more important projects. Plus, I had a lot of cardboard on hand. But there is actually someone out there who designed a 3D printable case for this printer, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the video description. Anyway, we use the spacers and screws to mount the main controller onto the cardboard so that both sides can get some really good airflow, as if rather the heat shrinks can get kind of hot when the 3D printer's on for too long. However, in my testing, they only got to about 60 degrees Celsius, which wasn't too bad. Okay, so now for mod number two. The rollers on the bed are prone to coming loose, which makes the whole thing wiggle while it prints which just causes a ball of filament to be printed instead of what we want. Now, to fix this, we're going to implement mod number 2, which is 3D printed this time. It's basically a piece of plastic that you screw under the non-existent heat bed that keeps all the rollers from coming loose. All we need to do is take apart the bed and screw it in place on the rollers. And this really does fix it. What would happen is the screws on the roller would come loose after a bit of use, which caused the problem. However, with this on, it gives it no wiggle room to come loose, fixing the problem permanently. Now, the next one isn't really a mod, but more of a cautionary tale. Now, you'll see when printing with this thing that the prints can barely stick to the base, and often come loose, which just messes with the print. Now, I thought I was really smart by scratching up the bottom of my base with a knife to try and give it better traction, and it did work. And then I turned the print over and saw the bottom Clearly not too smart. So after looking around, aside from a heat bed, the next best option to fixing this is to cover the print plate in painter's tape, or printer's tape if you will. This gives the molten plastic something to stick to, which results in your prints almost never coming unstuck. And it also doesn't leave any jagged lines, so it's win-win. The next mod is in my opinion the most useful of all. The biggest cause of fail prints for me was the spool getting stuck when coming out of the cheap box and the printer just continuing to print without extruding filament. So you'd leave to print something for a couple of hours and come back to find that it says that it printed just fine, but only half the thing is there. This not only wastes your time, but also wastes your filament, as you can't just go and tell the printer to print from halfway or wherever it stops. The solution, of course, is a spool holder, which can be printed in about five hours. 
The print sits on top of the printer and holds the filament in place. Not only does this let us print without worrying about the filament getting stuck and messing with our print, but also gives us more space on our desk. So again, win-win. Now the downside is it does sacrifice the carrying handle, but I do think it's a worthy trade. To mount it, all we need to do is unscrew the handle, screw the spool holder in place using the same screws, and put the filament in place. Really basic. Next mod. Okay, so I thought this one would make much more of a difference than it actually did, but even though I can't see the results, I'm sure it's helping in some way. This is a cooling fan for the filament as it comes out of the extruder. This helps stop the molten filament from collapsing when printing things like overhangs. What we're going to be printing is a holder for our fan that lets us mount it in place, and a little funnel that directs the airflow onto the filament. When we look at the printer, we can actually see that there are some pre-drilled holes for a cooling fan, but it wasn't included. Either way, this makes it much easier for us to mod. So the print takes about 3 hours and does require support, so don't forget to add that to your slicer. When it's done, we can screw it into the printer using some of those extra screws from before and attach the fan. So now we need to find a 12 volt power supply to power this fan. Now, if you take a look at the main controller board, there is an input for a cooling fan that just isn't used. Now, when I checked the voltage on mine after enabling it in my slicer, it came back with nothing. So either mine is defective or they've just disabled it for this version of the printer. So, knowing that, I'm just going to be powering this fan by tapping into the power lines for the heatsink fan. Now, before you freak out, the power supply supplies more than enough current to run both fans off a single port. I did double check. Now, that's all the mods I did for my printer. I nearly added some Arduino controlled RGB lights, but then I remembered that this thing is powered by a laptop power supply, so I avoided that for safety reasons. However, this is only a fraction of the mods you can actually make. I've seen lots and lots of really cool mods on Thingiverse, so if you have one of these, it's definitely worth checking it out. Now for the review. Once this printer is modded and calibrated using a good slicer like Slice 3 or Oh, it's an E. Like Slicer or Cura, it can really output some really reliable prints. Now, emphasis on reliable and not pretty, because most of the prints are quite jagged, even with the speed and layer size on low. So if you're going for smooth, easy prints, this might not be the printer for you. But this is after we've modded and calibrated it. I have to say that after you've finished building the printer, there isn't really any other help. They don't give you any recommended settings for your slicer, and they don't warn you about the bed being almost impossible to print to. And like, I do get that it was a very cheap printer, and they assume most people who buy it will be experienced with 3D printers. But for me, my first couple of prints took more than a few hours just to get set up, and then turned out awfully. I'm sure with some crazy calibration and dedication, you can get the default printer to output some really nice prints. But the issue is that there's no support from the company who made this, besides a supplied manual, which is just how to build it with some minor warnings. We instead have to rely on third-party content creators, which was the only reason I ended up getting mine working. However, this printer does have a pretty big following, so there's a lot of support available online. If you want to find links to all the mods used or some written instructions, those can be found in the video description. Thanks again to Gearbest for sending me this printer. Despite the mods it needed, this is my first 3D printer, so it does have a special place in my heart, and it's definitely more than usable for some projects. For example, I can't wait to redo the Rotary Pi laptop project with a 3D printed case instead of the cardboard one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.